Hello and welcome to this response video, if you like, um, to my original two sort of videos. One which is the my initial review of the Panasonic HC X920 and also then a review that I did a couple of months afterwards um, from a professional sort of point of view. And in between those two videos, I've actually had a lot of responses and a lot, quite a lot of questions um, online and offline about how to set up the camera, how to use you know the various different things like the the Optica bracket, the a lot of interest in the lens hood. I highly recommend that um, if you're using this in a, in a professional capacity, I would highly recommend that you actually get the lens hood. And I shall put a link down below um, with this step up ring. Today, I want to really talk about um, really the questions that I've been getting. And also people have been asking me, one about the lens hood, but also about how I actually set the camera up. And I've tested this camera over and over and over again with lots and lots of different configurations. My preferred method of using the camera is in manual mode. So if you're not interested in doing manual mode, then please don't watch this video. Um, but what I'm gonna go through is how I actually set, uh, what, what settings I use for the camera and basically some short shortcuts on uh, sort of shortcut tips on how to actually use the the camera if you like on the fly in a professional situation. Now we have shot in bright sunlight, really overcast, dull weather, really dark restaurants, um, kitchens, and things like that where we're doing product videos and um, e-product type. Uh, business videos and we find that the quality out of this camera is just consistently brilliant absolutely brilliant so I want to share with you um, the settings that I use and you'll have to bear with me because I'm not really let's put it this way I'm not really a teacher of any sorts so I'm going to record how I actually go through the settings um, and, and what I actually do, and I'm going to talk over them if, as, as much as possible. Hopefully you will find out how to set up um, the camera the same way that we've done, done it. And believe me, the only things that I really ever use is one menu. Once I've set the camera up in what I call the in-depth settings inside, I then only use the... Um, shortcut button just right on the left hand side of the lens to get access to the iris, the white balance, um, the shutter speed and the focusing and that is it. The camera is set up ready to go. Okay so let's just get into the menu system and I'll show you how I actually set this up. I'm actually going to also do a little bit of um, an explanation about the lens hood. Okay, I've got a lot of questions about the lens hood, about the step up ring and all of those other things and the reason why I chose this particular lens hood. Okay, so the rest of this is actually just not me in the camera. Um, it's going to be close ups basically onto the camera. So I uh, hope you find this video useful and um, you, you like my other videos as well um, about the X920. Right, first of all, I just wanted to show people in a little bit closer up detail um, the hood that I actually recommend and why I recommend it. I have actually tried two or three different combinations and, and different hoods. Um, the one that comes with the camera itself is actually, it's just too small. Um, and find it's 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 pretty useless really. The thread on the inside of this camera is 49 millimeter, um, and I tried a 49 millimeter lens hood, both a rigid one and a rubberized one, and I just found that what happens is that they are too deep, and what tends to happen is when the camera um, has got its stabilization mode on, which I tend to leave on, to be honest with you, unless it's on a tripod. Um, when the camera is moving from side to side, the actual sensor image to combat the stabilization, the OIS, is actually moving. The image is actually moving. And if you, if you put um, a 49 millimeter sort of what I call a, a standard lens hood on the front of this camera, you start getting vignetting 
along on, on the edges and if you you move the camera from one end you know one side to the other you then start getting this black border and you know down each down each side which i just found unex unacceptable um the other thing is this is a 169 camera therefore you really need a 169 lens hood so i found the best method was to purchase a 49 millimeter to 58 millimeter step up ring okay so this screws onto the front of the camera 49 mil and gives me then and because this is only about two or three millimeters deep it doesn't have any impact at all on the viewing of the camera on the inside i then managed to find this absolutely amazing lens hood made by a company called Menon, M-E-N-N-O-N. And I believe they're in America, but I actually purchased this one um, via Amazon or it could have been via eBay and it came from Germany. It's a very well-made lens hood and it includes this white balance, um, which I thought was a bit of a gimmick in the beginning. But believe it or not, I use it all the time. It's really, really good. This is obviously in a 169 format. It's very difficult to try and get these. Um, the other reason why I didn't choose to use a 49 millimeter wide is because again, this, the depth of this lens hood is actually quite deep. And I'm quite certain, and like all the other lens hoods that I was buying, if I was to screw this straight onto the camera, I would then start getting the vignetting again, not from the edges of the lens hood, but from the inside of the lens hood, the actual ring on the inside. So, having done my research and found that really what I was looking for was either an extremely shallow depth lens hood or one that was larger than the 49 mil lens ring here, which would then take the edge of the, the depth of this edge of the internal of the lens hood away from the sides of the camera. So my solution to this in short is to use a 49 millimeter to 58 millimeter because this is a 58 millimeter screw thread on here and it has a locking nut as well a locking ring on the outside so there's no fear of it twisting like this while it's on the camera absolutely brilliant solution very very well made it is plastic but it's matte black on the inside and it just looks professional so i quite simply screw the 49 mil to 58 mil step up ring onto the camera i then screw the lens hood into the step up ring and I get it to a point where yeah okay so the thread is finished there I like to have this little label on the top it's just nice because it's got a an arrow <coughs> excuse me I then use the locking ring on the lens hood to tighten it up to the camera and then not too tight but I you know tight enough so that it doesn't actually move around and then, hey presto, you have your lens hood on the camera. Not a huge, um, you know, sort of device really on the front of the camera. It looks, looks actually very impressive. And the other thing that I really, really like, despite the fact that the lens itself has got a um, cover on it when you switch the camera off, but I also like the fact that this is protection over the front of the camera. So hopefully that's explained the lens hood to people and the reason why I chose to use a 58 mil screw thread lens hood, 169 lens hood with the 49 mil to 58 mil step up ring. If anyone has any further questions about this um, lens hood, please do leave me a message. I'll be willing to answer them. Okay, this part I'm hoping to go through the menu system on the Panasonic HC X920. How I have actually set this camera up um, to get the absolute, min you know, the, the optimum settings for what I use it for. And as I've mentioned before, we're 
doing it for wedding videos so we could be outside doing sun bright sunny weather cloudy weather and whether we're doing a commercial shoot inside um, a restaurant for instance you know in that's actually quite dark um, some of these restaurants are not very brightly lit for obvious reasons or inside a you know a kitchen something like that and literally all I really then use on a regular basis are these settings here um, the you know the focus the white balance the shutter um, and the iris so you know and those can be accessed very very quickly by using the little shortcut button on the left hand side of the lens and that's what I do when I'm I'm actually you know hand hand holding or even on the stills um, you know on a on a tripod sorry so um, apologies for if I sort of wander through the menu system I'm not you know I have sort of set this camera camera up several months ago and don't really ever go into the menu system anymore but anyway this this is this is how I've set up this um, particular camera so that you click on the menu I then go through the setup and hopefully um, you can see this okay I mean all these are pretty bog standard there's nine screens here um, I've got the um, zoom record display is on OIS lock display is on um, external display I don't use one economy battery um, quick power on I switch off I don't really want that in quick start I also switch off um, generally speaking I think that's good if you're sort of out and about and you you it, it, the, the, you want it to go f you know fast when you power it on but it is fast anyway so these i believe actually just waste power i turn the recording lamp off i find it quite irritating <coughs> excuse me and i turn all sounds off as well because when you're actually doing a video recording in a wedding or whatever i don't want this camera you know flashing any lights or making any sounds basically um, the select operations icons are purely um, again I don't really use them to be honest they are the sort of the quick start to menu options that you get um, at the beginning um, the power LCD I guess that's something to do with external um, these are all things to do with external devices TV aspect I've got set to 16.9 um, Wi-Fi. I do use the Wi-Fi. It is it is actually quite handy to link it to my tablet. Um, I've got the. I like the way actually the zoom ring setting is when you're manu manually focusing the zoom ring here or you know at the top. Um, which way do you go? Because you know if you're if you're familiar with Canon or Nikon, they tend to go in the opposite direction. And it's a little bit confusing when you pick up either one or the other camera and you're used to one sort of way of, of it of doing it then um, you know it's nice to actually be able to control which way you're familiar with turning the ring round either to focus or zoom um, the other one is obviously f format media and then media status um, the rest of it basically is just pretty straightforward so that's that's um, the actual setup of the um, video camera picture mode um, personal preference I just actually don't use the um, picture capture side of this camera at all because I think the quality is just absolutely atrocious I don't even know why they put it on there I guess it's more con for convenience than anything okay the next menu um, option is the record setup which is where all the nice um, configurations are again this is only how I have set up my camera I would highly recommend that this could be a good starting point for you um, but this is how it works for us um, zoom mode I don't really see any need in the kind of videography that we do um, to actually go beyond 12 times 
the quality of the lens um, in digital mode in on any digital zoom mode on pretty much any camera that I've seen is just absolutely atrocious anyway. So use the optical zoom, keep it down to what the camera was designed to do basically. The recording mode, very, very important. Um, again, iframe is obviously for people who use Apple Mac. Why they've got these other um, options here, I really don't know because I don't know of anyone that uses 1080-50i at all. So the highest resolution that this camera will do is 1080-50p and that is what I actually have the um, camera set at. And, that, and it just stays on that all the time. I don't use any pre-record. Um, I don't use any anything here you can see is off face recognition, name display, face framing. I mean, all of those things to me are completely not a waste um, of time, really, unless you're into, you know, using this camera for non-professional reasons, then then it works it would probably work absolutely fine. Hybrid iOS, I switch on. And of course, when you've got the camera mounted on a tripod, you must switch the iOS off. And there's a shortcut button here on the inside of the, um, the, the panel, um, which you can switch on really, really, you know, switch on and off really, really easily. Fade, I've got switched off. Fade color, black guidelines, I switch off. Level gauge, I switch off. Level gauge could actually be quite useful if it was absolutely critical that you had the camera level. Like for instance, if you're doing, you know, panorama shots of some scenes or, you know, it had to be absolutely square on for buildings or, you know, interiors or something like that. Um, Generally speaking, I've got a level control actually on the tripods that I use anyway, so I know that the camera is going to be level. But you know, it is it, it's there. It's it's it is actually very useful. It's, it seems to be on most Panasonic cameras anyway. This I think is the key to this setting here: the auto slow shutter in two D mode, three D mode. I'm not never going to use. Um, the auto slow shutter I have switched on, what that does is that allows you to shoot lower than a 50th of a second. It will actually go down to 25th of a second. Quite key when you're shooting in low light. And I found that purely by accident um, when I kept seeing in the manual that it mentioned about 25th of a, of, of a second. What would you use that for? And I started actually using it. Um, which is really, really good. AGS, automatic gain control. Oh, um, automatic, no, AGS. Ah, yes, AGS, I think is the option that when you tilt the camera downwards, for instance, so if you're going to use the camera, you know, above someone cooking, for instance, and you wanted to shoot it downwards, it switches the camera off. That was actually quite an interesting option. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so I switched that off. It took me a little while to figure that one out because obviously I'm hand holding the camera. I could be, you know, over a group of people in a wedding, for instance, trying to shoot down in in the middle of them. You turn the, you tilt the camera forward or shooting downward, and all of a sudden the camera switched off. So um, I think that's what AGS stands for. I can't remember exactly what it what it's an abbreviation for. Um, tele macro, I switch off. Color night view, I switch off. S digital cinema color, I switch off. Some of these settings will change if you if you're in um, AI mode or AI plus mode, and whether you're in manual mode. And because I shoot in purely manual mode, some of these settings like this intelligent contrast gets switched off. Um, you know, and not that I, I want to be able to control my contrast anyway, so. Shooting guide, I have switched off. Uh, wind noise canceller, which on this camera is absolutely amazing. I've got switched onto normal. Um, it works absolutely fine. Another thing that I have found which I didn't really find that useful unless I'm going to be listening to my videos in 5.1 5 5 channel is to switch it to two channel recording. 
Um, and I really only use the onboard microphone um, if I'm going to use it at all for reference because I'm usually recording on a separate mic anyway. Um, the mic setup I have just in um, stereo mic because obviously it's, it's, it's two channels so I just leave it on there. Um, the mic level again quite useful. This is the automatic gain, gain control. Um, because I don't really use the audio on the camera, the audio on the camera is very good, but not good enough for what we actually use it for. So we use external recorders with proper um, Rode video mics and, and such like, so that works absolutely fine. Um, you have the options to set automatic gain control on and off, and you also have the option then to set the levels, which is actually really, really good. Um, I tend to just leave that on auto. Um, I don't increase any base setting at all on there. Um, picture adjustment, I think this is actually, I don't know whether this is to do with the monitor or whether this is to do with, I don't, I don't really know to be honest, I don't know. Uh, manual focus assistant, assistant is on. Again, this is the, um, allows you when you're focusing manually to be able to actually get it in focus properly and I believe it turns green where it's focusing which is you know really nice. I have zebra on so that I know after I've done my initial white balance setting I then can control the uh, you know uh, sorry adjust the iris um, possibly the shutter speed um, by making sure that I don't get too many blowouts, hence that's why you've got the zebra. The zebra is like a um, literally sort of hashed lines, diagonal lines. Um, these two are for the display, so I have luminance um, on adjustment and histogram on adjustment, which is actually very useful again for um, light levels and you know the amount of light and dark that is is in the video. So that's basically my recording setup. Um, I think if you go around again, that's that's just about it. Um, the other things that I have enabled on the menu are obviously focus, white balance, shutter and iris. Um, this is the macro mode. You can assign these buttons here in the menu, in the previous menu. Um, so I've got sort of a night mode, which is a, which is actually quite good. It's not too bad. I've got this level mode, um, which is actually again quite good. And then you've got sort of this steady shot mode, which actually helps to stabilize the shot a little bit more if you keep your finger pressed on there. Um, don't really use this sort of touch screen telephoto wide or recording buttons because I tend to do it from the buttons actually on the camera. And then we're back to the menu again. Okay, so that's basically the menu system and how I've actually set up this camera and get the results that I get. What I thought I'd just very quickly go through now is how fast and how quick I go through, and I'm going to slow this down, how I actually, my workflow from, from sort of switching the camera on. Now, if I'm, on, if, I'm on a, if I'm actually going on a shoot, I'm doing a wedding or something, I switch the camera on and I only, I use it, you know, switching it on and off, switching it off by just closing the LCD screen and immediately opening it back up again. I mean, literally within a second or two seconds, you're back in and you're recording again. Um, the menu that I normally have, which I actually bring up by just pressing this button on the side, I can't really get my hand around there at the moment. Okay, so I'm gonna just use this. Um, so I, I choose whether straight away, whether I'm going to use autofocus or manual focus. Generally speaking, most of the time I find the autofocus is absolutely fine. Um, I do manual focus if you want to do pull focus on on certain things or you actually want to go in quite closely. My next thing that I do straight away is white balance. Now, hopefully you can see that I've still got the men on um, white balance. You can see my finger moving, moving around there. Um, basically, this is the first thing that I do. All the, the, the options that you've got when you go through, 
you've got automatic white balance you've then got these various different modes here which to be honest with you I don't really use at all because none of them are really very accurate this particular one that's flashing is telling me that a custom white balance hasn't been set yet so with the hood on I normally point the camera to a light source or to the greatest light source within a room or you know wherever it happens to be and you just press that and it takes a white balance reading now it's going to continue to keep flashing because I'm actually pointing the camera at a very dark background it's a black background therefore it can't take a very good light reading uh, white balance reading but had the white balance been adjusted manually this would have stopped flashing <coughs> which would have allowed me to um, get my white balance and continue on I then select my shutter speed and I make a choice this is the slowest that the shutter speed that you can select which is 125th of a second generally speaking most of the time you would be using a 50th of a second you can of course go up it depends on you know if you if you're if you need to go up higher for whatever particular reason but generally speaking I think the the general guidelines I use 50th of a second or and you can use a 25th of a second by setting that um, slow shutter option in the menu system my next option then is to go into my iris settings and this is where the histogram is really really good because um, and this particular figure here I can't remember exactly off the top of the head my head what it uses but I tend to use the histogram <coughs> and I adjust my iris accordingly so at the moment the camera sort of adjusted itself automatically to open 0 dB and um, if I was if I was to actually take the lens hood off I would then have a very very good idea that I needed to try and get my exposure my histogram to show sort of you know the, the proper exposure in the middle so at the moment I've got some rather big lights on at the moment to do this video and it's showing that I need to use about f2 which is really really good the higher you go beyond open and 0 dB beyond that you're going to it's kind of like overexposing really and the higher the more dB that you are adding and this is a bit like opening the lens you know the, the iris on a normal camera the higher you go and now you can start seeing the zebra patterning because it's now overexposed but the higher you go the more noise you're going to get now with all the camera settings that I've got I have found that I can go all the way up and I believe it goes up to 18 dB yeah 18 d open 18 dB is as high as it can go and we have I you know I've actually found that that works perfectly okay in very very dark lit situations like you know a candle lit dinner for instance and you want to try and get the atmosphere um, it's very rare that I've ever had to use the camera in this particular mode but the higher the DB the more noise you're going to get and you're going to start seeing um, the blacks are going to be crushed I believe the term is crushed as in they then start sort of pixelating a little bit so I try not to actually go up that high I try to use the shutter at a 25th of a second get my white balance correct which again has an impact I found on noise and then I adjust the iris accordingly towards you know for my histogram so to get sort of a correct exposure in this particular situation I'm looking about f2 shutter speed is a 25th of a second my white balance is possibly you know potentially already done and I have a choice whether to use manual or automatic focusing that is it that is all I use the camera once it's been set up these are the only options that I ever change and that is my workflow I choose my focus I immediately do a manual white balance using the a light, you know the brightest light source and getting the um, lens hood on I select my shutter which tends to be only 25th of a second or 50th of a second and then I obviously adjust my exposure accordingly using the histogram that's it hopefully you found that useful 
and I really do hope that this explains how we get the best video quality out of this particular camera. Thank you very much for staying with me on this video. I know it's been a bit long. I really did want to try and um, do an in-depth video so that people could um, actually see how we've set up this camera and how we are consistently getting um, the, the absolutely amazing results with this particular camera for our professional business. Um, I hope for you, hopefully you found it useful and um, if you have any more questions, please do leave a message down below. And I would like to say thank you very much. And thank you very much for subscribing if you want to subscribe or liking this video if you find it useful. Thank you.